So you have a Raspberry Pi and you want to run Kubernetes on it. Today in this video, I'll show you how to set up K3S, which is a lightweight Kubernetes cluster. And it also supports both x86 and ARM based processors. At the end of today's video, you'll have a home lab set up with K3S and all the resources running on it with Helm with Terraform. Let's get started. Uh, all right, before we begin, I uh, wanted to just address the fact that I'll be using Windows in this video. You don't need to. Um, the reason I am because I accidentally broke one of the partitions on Linux. Um, so from next video, uh, I'll be back on Linux. But for this one, we're going to be sticking with uh, my Windows. And um, so to set up the infrastructure, uh, that is the Kubernetes cluster and any resources on top of it, um, all you need is Terraform. Um, so if you look at the code, uh, all of it is written in Terraform. And uh, to run it, you can either uh, run the Terraform directly on the Pi, uh, or you could run it on any Terraform agent as long as it can SSH into the Pi, right? Uh, so because this is a home lab um, and uh, this machine is also on the same network, I can run Terraform on this machine, which will internally SSH into the Pi and uh, set up all the infrastructure. So that's how we're going to use it. Um, and to set up the SSH, uh, you need to use um, and a key pair. Uh, so if I look at the Raspberry Pi imager, I used the uh, Raspberry Pi OS, which is based on Debian. And uh, when you go to, when you choose that OS, you'll get this uh, gear icon here. And you can pass in, uh, so you enable SSH, you, if you want to also set up a host name, and you pass in uh, your uh, RSA key, the a public key uh, once that's done uh, it will set up the um, ssh on the pi and then you can get your uh, private key from the pi by uh, using ssh uh, that's what i have so if i go to my um, wsl here you can see i am on this machine and if i do ssh uh, by passing in this identity uh, i can connect to the pi which is this cool so now um uh, i've already cloned the repository which is this one so if i do git remote v you'll see i've already cloned it and just to be sure i'll just pull any latest changes and just quickly let's go through the code right so um i have uh, organized this pretty similar to how you would organize the front end uh, component library uh Eventually, anything that is reusable will come into a folder called Atoms. Uh, right now, I just started the project, so everything is, is called a molecule because it's not reusable in any way. So the first uh, sort of molecule that you want to run is K3S, which is um, you should set up your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, right now, I, I only have one machine, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but what I want to do is uh, any machine on the uh, network which potentially could run k3s i want that to be set up with k3s so as long as it uh, runs and starts up it connects to the cluster and i can run workloads on it and when it goes down the uh, resources will distribute again so that's the idea uh, but for now i just have one machine the raspberry pi itself uh, so if you see i'm doing the basic uh, curl for the k3s download and when i do terraform destroy uh, this this second resource gets uh, triggered, which is deleting any uh, Docker images running on it. Uh, one more thing is uh, by default, uh, K3S will try to use container D. Uh, I prefer Docker because I'm more used to it. And uh, given the fact that you can SSH into the node, um, using Docker gives you more flexibility, at least to me, to look at what's running and uh, if I want to debug something, even though most likely you'll just end up using kubectl. But yeah, uh, that's the first molecule. Um, the second one is uh, cluster resources. So anything that needs to be installed on the cluster itself. Right now, uh, it's a couple of Helm charts. If I look at the default variables, you'll see the first one is the in Nginx ingress, which is used to expose uh, services from your cluster. One is called as Hajimari, which, which is like a dashboard for your um, cluster. Uh, a PostgreSQL, uh, just for testing for now. 
I am still working on a couple more things, uh, Nextcloud and Core DNS, but I do have PyHole installed, which is the DNS server running on the cluster. So those are it. Uh, let's get started and uh, run Terraform Apply. So also, if you look at the Py itself, uh, I'll again SSH into it. And if I show the IP address, uh, it's at this, which is running through Ethernet. Uh, I have turned off the other oh, the Wi-Fi back up, so I'll turn it off. Uh, ideally, you want to use Ethernet uh, to get the highest speeds, but you could obviously use Wi-Fi as well. So yeah, I wanted to show you that this is the IP address, but uh, because this is statically assigned through my router's uh, settings, uh, I can use the Pi's host name and then use pi.local to address it. Cool. So let's start running the first uh, molecule, which is K3S. So if you look at this, I have set up uh, input KFRs, uh, which is just the IP address. You could also use the host name and the private key that is used to connect to the Pi. About the Terraform state that is created for each molecule, you'll see that if I go to providers.tf, I have an HTTP backend setup and I'm using something called as Plumber CD's um, Terraform backend Git. So what happens is um, because I could potentially run um, the Terraform from any machine, as long as it's able to SSH into the Pi, uh, I want to store the state somewhere remote. So I've used this private uh, Git repository and it stores the JSON files here. So right now you can see there's uh, no resource. I did a Terraform destroy. Um, so yeah, those are all the things. If you don't want to use the remote Git, well, what you can do is just comment out uh, this backend and you'll end up using a local um, backend. So it's going to store those JSON file uh, in your local machine. Right, so we can start running the molecules. Um, I've also installed Terraform backend Git from go and uh, set up the environment variables because i'm using the git backend otherwise you don't need to do any of this and i can do terraform in it and pass the necessary configurations as you can see it's hitting the uh, git repository to create the state file if it's not there uh, there is one empty one so it's going to reuse that and also going to install any plugins that i need We'll let that finish and in the meantime and show you the um server file um you can also see that you can pass this variable called k3s so this uh, with this you can modify you don't necessarily need to modify the download url but in case it changes i wanted to expose it as a variable and also the version of k3s that you want by default, I'm using 1.25.5, which is probably the latest. Uh, but because uh, these versions come out pretty quick, um, I wanted to give you an option if you want to change it from the variables. So that's that. And all right, so the Terraform init is done. Now, there's no reason for me to plan uh, because I can directly see the uh, changes with apply. So this is the terraform plan which is creating the resources even though it shows that it's going to uninstall uh, because we have passed the when parameter to be destroyed it's not going to run these commands so that should be fine uh, the command that is going to be run is this one which is installing the k3s so i'm going to say yes and this is going to take a while because it's going to download the necessary uh, binary for k3s it has to download the images to run the cluster um, and uh, eventually it's going to run i think uh, storage uh, provisioner uh, metric server um, and a couple more things so yeah i'll fast forward this uh, until it finishes so the terraform apply is complete for the k3s molecule and as you can see i'm also writing the a cube config that I got from each of the servers into a map and it is mark sensitive so you can't see it but uh, I'm storing the output from the Raspberry Pi modifying the uh, host name because by default it's 127.0.0.1 so modifying that to the IP address and then 
uh, putting that in the variable, uh, putting that in and putting that in an output. And that is because for the cluster resources uh, molecule, I require the cube config to set up uh, the cluster resources. I'm going to get that value and then run the next molecule. All right. So now that the cluster is set up, I can also create resources within the cluster. Um, and that is the second molecule, uh, cluster resources. What I've also done is downloaded the cube config from my outputs because I have the remote state on GitHub. I downloaded the value and uh, as you can see, this was also modified to reflect the IP of the node. So that's done. And the way I've stored it is because potentially you could have multiple machines. Uh, you would keep all your cube configs in the config folder prefixed with the IP address of each of those machines. And um, the other thing that I want to show you is in the inputs, I pass the path to config. As you can see, this, this is just one. Uh, it's not scaled to multiple machines yet, but I'll be making those changes. And if you would like to do that, uh, you could contribute to the repository as well. Uh, also, uh, in terms of variables, not a whole lot going on, uh, passing the IP to the node, uh, the path where the config is. This is in the machine that's running Terraform, so not on the actual node. And then the name of the cluster, it's just default for now. And a couple of hosts where we'll be listening uh, for connections on the Nginx ingress. So what I'll be doing is uh, I'm using two separate um, hosts. One is NIP, which is no IP. So this is this doesn't require me to set up a DNS. And what it does is anything prefixing the NIP.io will be resolved as the value. So when I hit this as my um, host, hope I have big installed. Yeah. So if I do a, whoops, a dig on this, it resolves to the prefixed uh, IP address. So that is because in case my local DNS doesn't work, I still want to be able to access the Pi. And um, this is one way to do it. And the reason I do want to use IP is because if I do that, any potential host name that resolves to um, my Pi's IP address, which is 192.68.100, uh, will resolve to the Pi. And I want to at some point add uh, HTTPS support. So that is the reason I'm only exposing on certain hosts. In terms of the variables, most of the defaults should work out for you. But if you want to add any extra applications, you can do that as well. So by default, as I showed you, I have uh, four different applications. Uh, but because these are just Helm charts, all you need to do is pass in the name of the application, uh, its repository. Uh, any pinned version and namespace where you want to install it. By default, I'm also creating the namespace called as home lab where everything uh, stays. And uh, the reason I'm passing version specifically because I want to discourage using the latest tags, uh, always use version, always pin your versions. All right, so let's deploy this. Uh, if I go to my terminal here, so I can start the Terraform backend git again. Again, feel free to ignore this if you're using local backends. And then Terraform apply. Oh, I need to do init. So let's do that first. So the Terraform init is finished. Now let's do Terraform apply. As you can see, a lot of uh, changes. Um, and most of them are just uh, creating the Helm resources. I also have uh, in the molecule itself any config that needs to be passed uh, per application so for example for hajimari i want to uh, make these changes in the helm chart uh, things like uh, adding search providers adding any bookmarks And then how to expose that to the Nginx ingress. That is also part of a TF template, which uses the same hosts that we passed from the variables and then deploys it. So let's say yes here and wait for the resources to get deployed. And again, I'll fast forward this because it's going to take a while to install all the applications. It has to download the Docker images and all of that. So now that the cluster resources molecule is also deployed, we can go ahead and start using the home lab. 
uh, I'm using the pi.lol, which is a valid TLD, by the way, uh, to uh, get to the dashboard. You can also use the nip.io uh, URL, which will work without having a custom uh, DNS server, right? Um, so this is it. And then if you want to get to the uh, pihole DNS, it's the pihole subdomain. Uh, it doesn't have a root uh, route, so let's go to slash admin. By default, the uh, password is admin. And here you will get your entire dashboard. Now, one thing that you have to do, at least for now, is to add all your URLs that need to point to the Pi's IP manually in the DNS domains, in the local DNS part. Uh, later, I'll be automating this to just flow directly through the Helm chart. For now, it's all manual. And this is required because we want to use this pihole as the DNS on my router. And the reason we want to do this is because we want to use this as the DNS server on my home network. So I'll go to my router's uh, settings and then change the name server. That setting might look different on your machine. So on my router, I have this option of setting the name servers on my uh, internet slash DNS settings page. Uh, you just need to update it with uh, whatever your Pi's IP address is. Mine's statically assigned, uh, so it's fine. Uh, and once this is done, uh, even the LOL uh, URL will start working. Hope you enjoyed the part two of the home server series. Uh, make sure you leave a like down below and uh, subscribe for more videos related to Kubernetes, DevOps, and uh, software engineering in general. And uh, see you in the next one.